Hi everyone, Harris here with the iDownload blog. So in the past couple weeks, I've made two videos in the series of actually useful tips. Today we're back with a third about the iPad. And if you wanna see one about the Mac, you'll have to let me know with a thumbs up. But we're gonna take a look at some actually useful tips for your iPad. Now the sponsor for this video is Paperlike. And if you have an iPad, especially if you have an Apple Pencil, you wanna check out Paperlike. The screen protectors essentially eliminate the fingerprints from the display, something I really needed on the iPad Pro. And if you're using the Apple Pencil, it feels a lot like you're writing on paper because of the matte texture. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check it out. So starting off with number one. In the iPhone video, I talked about how you can hold down multiple applications to drag them across your screen at once. And that was new for a lot of people. And you can do the same exact thing on your iPad. If you're holding down multiple applications, you just tap, 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 and it will compile uh, your list of apps that you can drag and drop somewhere else. But in this, I wanna talk about all the other things that you can drag and drop and accumulate on your iPad. You can do the same things with files, images, text, etc. You can drag and drop even to multiple fingers, having multiple stacks, so you can really get creative um, and powerful with your dragging and dropping, whether it is photos in the Photos app, files in the Files app, text or links or whatever it may be, you can hold and select and tap more things, drag them across multiple applications. It's very powerful for moving files across your device. This includes dragging things into a new tab on Safari. And Safari has a very powerful feature of being able to have two tabs open side by side for some really serious multitasking and power using when browsing the web or researching or whatever you're doing. Now there are several methods for doing this. If you're using a keyboard, you can use Command N to initiate the second screen, um, or you can hold a link and drag. You can hold a link and click open new tab, or you can hold the tab button and open in a new tab, or hold and drag the tab for a split screen Safari. And those are all really powerful if you want split screen in Safari. Now I talked about in the iPhone video a way to get your screen even dimmer, something perfect for using at night or any very dark situations that you wanna save your eyes some strain. I talked about using a low light filter in the accessibility settings, but I found an even quicker one that doesn't require any zoom settings. If you go into your settings and accessibility and you turn on reduce white point, you can adjust the value that you want. I have it at 100% with a triple click by following these settings that you see on screen. Uh, by triple clicking your power button or your home button, depending on your device, you can actually reduce the brightness of your display even further. And this is just a little bit quicker than the method I showed in the iPhone video, and I use this all the time. Now, if you're typing on a document or you're using any type of word input, um, there's two tips I have from the keyboard. The big one and my favorite one is that with two fingers, you can actually move the cursor around on your display. I wish this was something that worked on the physical keyboards like I have for my iPad Pro. Uh, but just on the software keyboard, you can actually use two fingers to move around the cursor throughout your text, and that is very precise and very handy. And secondly, if you notice the little icons on the upper half of the keys, um, those are actually enabled by swiping down on that key. So if you want to type in numbers, it's very quick to just swipe down on your keys as you're going. If you want to activate numbers, I often find this much faster than actually going into the second screen to get your numbers or punctuation. Now, if you have a new iPad Pro like I have here, something that I use actually all the time is USB-C to other adapters. Um, I have a USB-C to Lightning and a USB-C to Apple Watch adapter, so I can charge my Apple Watch as I often do on road trips. Pretty much any time I go on a road trip, I'm only bringing my USB-C to Apple Watch connector. And I also have a USB-C to Lightning connector, which I can use to charge my iPhone either from my iPad or from my Mac, and I love doing that from this iPad. And speaking of charging, so with this charging adapter that comes with the iPad, if you actually use that adapter for your iPhone with the USB-C to Lightning cable, you will charge your iPhone faster, which is very handy. Or alternatively, if you happen to have a MacBook and it is the new MacBook with the USB-C charger, you can use the same cable, but your Mac's charger to charge your iPad faster. That's kind of a beginner's tip, but it's very nice to be able to share charging adapters via USB-C to improve and increase the speed of your charging on a smaller device. If you're really not a fan of the restart mechanism on the iPhone and the iPad, where you have to click, click, hold and restart and to power off and then turn it back on, you can actually use the assistive touch method to instantly restart just from a few clicks. It uses the same triple click method that we talked about from accessibility, 
but using this will allow you to restart your device just by using the screen and you don't have to do any combination of click click hold restarts you just triple click the power button or the home button to get into this settings and so with the newer iPhones that don't have the home button um, this is a nice tip if you want to restart your iPhone a little bit more simply. Of course there's other tips like the multitasking and you can have two apps open at once. You can have a third application hanging over and then you can swipe that away and just pull it back and other small things like that that we've covered in videos. But for the most part that's what I have to share today. Those are the tips I have for you for your iPad. If any of these are new let me know and I hope something is. Uh, but thank you very much for watching this video and um, make sure to check out our other iPad content as well as paper like down in the description if you want a great screen protector to protect your iPad and get rid of those fingerprints and glare. Thank you for watching.